So we were given a hard time about using the cheap backpacks. All right, good morning everyone. It's Ben. I'm on the road, it's Tuesday. So normally on Tuesdays I go to Omaha, visit our office up there, and that's where I'm headed today. I've got a little surprise for them, a vacuum for roaches. Uh, their old one broke, so bringing them a new one. Anyway, got a few things planned today. Josh needs some help with a couple of projects. We're going to rebuild one of the Birchmeyer backpacks. Those are a little more high dollar than what we run down in Kansas City, but they seem to take care of them, so we buy them nice backpacks. But we're gonna rebuild one of those today, and it's uh, almost eight o'clock. I've been on the road for just over two hours. I usually get there just before nine, but it's a beautiful day. It's a crisp uh, six degrees this morning with some winds, so it's chilly, but good day to ride around in the truck for six hours I think anyway we'll uh, we'll get up here and see how they're doing all right so I'm here with Josh he's trying to get out of the shot <laughs> in Omaha it's cold today oh yeah but we're gonna work on a backpack so they use mainly Birchmeyer backpacks which are very high quality uh, nice backpacks nicer than ours but uh, they they do cost to fix. So we got yeah. how many how much in parts did we spend to get this one going? Uh, about close to 300, 350. That's a lot in parts, but it's cheaper than the backpack. So we're gonna put this thing back together, and this is what they look like. The nice thing about the Birchmeyer backpacks, obviously they're built sturdy and they have real brass handles and triggers. But the cool thing is all of the parts for the pump are exposed, they're outside of the tank. The uh, Solo or the, the plastic backpacks that we use, all of the pump mechanism is inside. So you have to take it apart, pull that out of the tank to get it repaired, which they're not too bad, but this is kind of nice that they're built right on the outside okay this is the older style that we have that we're working on that old one that was shown is the newer style but a lot of the parts are still interchangeable so how quickly can you tear one of these down and put them back together uh each bat pack's a little different probably about 30 minutes for a tear down depending on how old it is and if all the parts are just seized together which seems to be on a lot of them all right, well, let's look at the one we've got to fix. It's already tore down, kind of in pieces. But you can buy pretty much all the parts, right? Whatever you need, you can buy separately and you could build one out of parts if you wanted to, but it'd be expensive. I think it's cheaper to buy the whole thing, right? Yeah, yeah, if you get above 200 bucks, you might as well buy a new one. Yeah, <laughs> but we're gonna put this one together, so let's get started. This right here is obviously the base. I've straightened it out as much as possible, but it seems like they're discontinued. So. <laughs> so for the older style, the parts are harder to get as far as the base and line. Gotcha. Yeah, some of it's internal and you don't really have a whole lot of space to work with. That's okay. It's gotta have the pickup tube that goes inside, but the compression chamber and a lot of the pump mechanism are built onto the outside, which is kind of cool. All right, well, let's assemble this.
So this is the older generation backpack. These are newer straps. I don't know if they make the older straps anymore, but um, these are the only ones available right now. They do come with a, a little clip for the older backpacks because on the newer ones, it has a little slot where the strap locks into at the bottom. This doesn't have it. On the old straps, there's usually hooks that hook underneath there. And the new straps do come with a hook for the older backpacks. So you get an adapter with the new straps. The new straps are contoured, which is nice. This is what the old straps look like. New strap. Got to attach it in. You just take this clip here and it holds the strap into right here. So basically you thread it in through the top. And then you put the clip in. And sometimes you can get the clip in easily. Sometimes it takes you up to 10 minutes. <laughs> Up the right side. Yep. Usually every year you have to replace something on it. Okay. Whether it be a gasket or somebody just breaking something because they are plastic, so over time it's going to weaken. And they're like 400, something like that, $400 new. Yep. So we spend, I think we spend like $75 or $60 on the, the solos. And that's why if you've got a bunch of guys that you can't trust, 
to take care of their equipment, then you want to use a cheaper backpack that's easily replaceable. <laughs> Josh is definitely on top of it more with his guys. He has a smaller crew so he can watch how they take care of their backpacks and these work out better for, for them. So anyway, that's how you rebuild most of a Birchmeyer backpack. They're, they're pretty simple. I mean, they're all the same concept. There's a piston, there's cylinder, there's a compression chamber, and then there's hoses. So that's pretty much it. Yeah, it's pretty bulletproof unless you have to replace a gasket. So. All right. Okay, I am on the road back. It's uh, warmer in the truck than it was earlier, so I took my jacket off. Anyway, I wanted to cover, we've had a few comments about different equipment. And I just wanted to cover something really quick. So yes, the Birchmeyer backpacks are by far the best pump backpack that you can buy. The Solo backpacks are probably the cheapest um, all around backpack you can buy. Why do we use different backpacks? I covered it a little bit, but you know, your cost for what you spend and what you have to replace you have to take into consideration and that really depends on the people that are using them how well they take care of them um, how much they have to use them how much you know maintenance they're going to require how much parts are going to cost long term how much is it going to cost you to use a certain piece of equipment so as far as backpacks that's why we've determined what we're going to use in each office just by who's using them and how much it costs to use them. So are we using the best backpacks in Kansas City? No, but we're using the best backpacks for us. Um, why are we using Birchmeyer in Omaha when the other ones work good for us in Kansas City? We had a bunch of them. So actually at one point we took all of the Birchmeyers away from Kansas City and brought them to Omaha because um, the branch manager there was willing to take care of them so uh, that's kind of how it got split up now as far as inside sprayers we will only use the B&G sprayers um, we have one that's a knockoff or actually we have two that are knockoff brands and they work fine the parts are somewhat interchangeable but it's just easiest to go with what we know works best so we do want precision spray inside. Um, even though the guys may not take care of them as well as they should, it's important for us to have a controlled precision spray inside when we're dealing with people's new homes, old homes, all of their personal belongings, all that kind of stuff. So that's why we use those. Outside, there's lots of controversy. Every company is going to have their opinion of what's best. And can one technician do a better job with an inferior or a different type of sprayer? Yes. Why do we use power sprayers when they're over 2,000 a piece? Because we feel that's the best for our crews to get the best product, best coverage, uh, best result. There are backpacks that you can use outside that are designed very well and do a good job. Um, electric backpacks like Flowzone, they're great. Uh, there's other knockoff electrics that work decent. But for the service that we offer and in our area, we found that the best results come from power spraying and we can cover a wider area around the house and that's why we do it. Is it the best for everybody? No. Um, so we respect and appreciate everybody's opinions about what sprayers to use and, and what to do. But we, uh, you know, we've been here since 2006 and we've tried several different methods over the years and we've had different technicians come in with different opinions. But all in all, overall, for our company, the best results we can get uh, come from the way we do things. So that just covers why we do what we do. It doesn't mean that we're saying other people that use an electronic backpack, for example, are 
are doing an inferior job. That's not what we're saying. Sometimes that's the case. Um, I've seen a lot of people use fancy equipment or different equipment and not do a good job. So there are guys that care about what they do um, and we respect them. And there are guys that don't care. And we try to take their business because you know, if you're paying for something, you should get what you deserve. So that's my soapbox rant while we're driving. Trust me, I've sat here and thought about this all the way home, just wanting to make sure that we clear the air. We're not saying anybody does anything better or worse. This is just what works best for us. I am headed back home. It's been a long day on the road, but it's good to see my other crew in Omaha. We care about them quite a bit, and they're awesome. So it's cold up there. It's now 23 degrees where I'm at, which is a lot warmer, and I think it's going to even get warmer. But we're back on the road, headed home. Thanks for letting me rant, and I appreciate all of you guys watching. Thanks for your time. We'll see you on the next one.